Smokey's uh, channel, <clears throat> we, <clears throat> I was telling him about our conversation about P. Diddy and stuff, and, mm. and uh. like, like, Naroki didn't really understand how freaking big that story was, you know what I mean? Because, like, I was telling him how he had to, like, break us up and start a conversation, try to change the topic, because it was taking so long. <laughs> and, uh, the funny part about it is, is after we had that I went on to two other shows and we were talking about the same thing and everybody freaking had something to say about it like it's it, it really is big news yeah and not only that and that's something I wanted to talk about when I have you on the show because mm -hmm. that's going to keep getting bigger and bigger um it's looking more and more like this might be even connected to the Epstein scandal Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of names that weren't on the Epstein list, but were on the uh, Diddlers. I'm calling him the Diddler from now on, by the way, did he? He is the Diddler. And uh, a lot of names that showed up on there, some cross names between both lists, like Clintons and Obamas, showing up on both lists. Um, so the shit if is hitting the fan and another uh, female has I think uh, come forward in the last 24 hours uh, claiming uh, to either been trafficked or abused by Diddy so now see that's what I was also mentioning like whenever they they talk about trafficking are they talking about like child trafficking and I had somebody say that the girls were between like 12 and 14 that made some of these claims yeah, it's uh, not just girls, boys. Uh, he was also grooming artists um, that are coming into the industry, like Justin Bieber, Usher, uh, Mickey Mill. Justin Bieber, when he was 15, he started grooming them and he started having them over at his freak off parties. Um, I don't know if you've seen the uh, video going viral with uh, it shows football player Adele Beckham Jr., who was with the Miami Dolphins. Mm hmm. Uh, and he's on video, and you can see Justin uh, giving him oral. Oh my God! Um, and uh, they're in a nightclub, and at the same time, there's a guy behind the Odell Beckham, the football player, and he's giving him uh, well uh, a rude entry into the back door. Oh my Let's God. just say. And uh, mm -hmm. as this is going on, the uh, video uh, comes up close, catches him by surprise, and. He, you could clearly see the guy pumping in the back. Uh, Odell Beckham looks directly at the camera like, Oh, you just caught me. You know, and uh, Justin Bieber uh, has his face by his crotch. And he lifts his head up, turns around, looks right directly at the camera. And then does something like odd with his face. Like, he looked like he was stoned out of his mind. Um, his lips are all wet. Uh, like... There's a lot of saliva just coming out of it, or maybe somebody just injected some uh, of the fluids in there. Uh, either way, it's not a good look for the beads. Also, it explains why before all this started hitting the fan, uh, he sold his entire catalog for $200 million and left the music industry. Yeah. He, he I actually... Think he knew this was coming. He actually yeah. had a breakdown and started getting all rebellious and crazy, too. I would explain that, because yeah. usually when kids have been touched, they, they have a tendency of doing that, lashing out. Well, not, not only that, um, in one of his last songs, he said how he did it all for a Ferrari. I think they groomed him, and they started giving him gifts, and he was, like, so drugged all the time that half of the stuff he was doing, the party doesn't even know what he was doing. Yeah, that's crazy. And um, that happens to a lot. That happened to Corey Haim. Uh, Corey Feldman talked yeah. about it. Um, they, you know, it's uh, gone on and on and on. Dana Plato of uh, Different Strokes was a victim of that. Mm -hmm. um, Taj Jackson, one of the uh, Jackson uh, <coughs> kids, who is one of Michael's nephews. Uh, was also groomed by a producer and, and molested, and the guy who actually came in and uh, saved them was Michael, go figure, and a lot of people don't know that story. Um, 
but uh, there's, I mean, in the, in, in the music industry in particular, there's a lot of grooming of, of young artists. Usher was sent to live with Diddy when he was like 12 or 13 on there. I mean, think of it. Yeah. Why would, why would any parent send their child at that age? Uh, not, you know, let's just say he's a random producer, right? Mm-hmm. He's in, you know, 30 some, whatever, 40 year old producer at that time. This is a, a 13 year old kid uh, away from home. Why would you send him to live there for a year? And on top of that, uh, now it's not just a random producer. It's a guy who's notoriously uh, involved in gangs and other activities, drugs, and, and stuff like that. What reasonable parent or responsible parent would actually, uh, you know, send their child to that environment? Um, so, I mean, the parents need to be charged. Diddy needs to be charged. Uh, Usher is very reluctant on speaking. Uh, but he really needs to come forward because he knows what happened. And the reason he doesn't want to say anything, anything because he groomed Justin Bieber. You know, yeah. it, it follows that pattern. And um, it's going to get worse. Well, I mean, you see that happening a lot, too. Like Everybody has their suspicions about Michael Jackson and all the kids that he had at his mansion and stuff, too. So, you know, that that was there, too. And, uh, yeah, but see, there's uh, with Michael, there's a little bit of, of a different um, interpretation, which people are kind of like misconceiving. People always say, "Oh, he had a bunch of kids over, and they're all sleeping in the bed, and they're like all getting molested and fingered up the ass by Michael Jackson." Um, actually, Michael Jackson, for the most part, his bedroom was uh, like a, a, a house. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, and I'm talking about like his bedroom had two floors. Uh, it had multiple couches. Uh, had a huge bed. And when they say, "Oh, kids are sleeping over," they're like, "Oh, he picked up some random kids from the neighborhoods." Uh, no, we're talking about like his nieces and nephews. Okay, uh, you know, like family members. His young siblings, uh, kids, you know, uh, not exactly people that he's gonna rape. Mm-hmm. Those are the kids who are hanging out, and and every single one of them always said, Yeah, Michael, he would sleep on the floor, we would watch, uh, you know, Disney movies or whatever, play video games. And that was it. And uh, I followed the, both cases uh, pretty, you know, close. And there's stuff that people don't know about, like the first case uh, in 93, which was disgustingly obvious that it was a hoax. Uh, the father, I don't know if you know the, the story of Jordan Chandler, the kid. Yeah, I heard Jordan Chandler. Um, yeah, he was the one who uh, they based the, the case on. Um, his dad uh, was a writer and producer for the movie Robin Hood Men in Tights, directed by Mel Brooks. Um, now you can look this up, I'm not, I'm not lying. Uh, the dude wanted to make a movie, he went to Michael for $20 million, Michael turned him down, he said, I'm not interested because he didn't like the script and stuff. And uh, there's a recording that somebody did of a conversation with Jordan Chandler's father, where he says, I have an idea and I know exactly what I'm going to do, and it's going to ruin him. And he's talking about Michael because he didn't give him 20 million to make a movie. Uh, so then they have uh, other recordings of Jordan himself, and you can tell he's being groomed into the story by psychiatrists and and all this stuff. But uh, it, it wasn't Michael that paid him off. It was his attorneys because Michael was in the middle of a big concert tour and. A controversy uh, would have destroyed a multi hundred million dollar plus tour. Mm-hmm. So it, the attorneys paid off. Michael didn't even know about it. He wanted to take that to court. It was a bullshit case. And he never molested that kid. The father of Jordan Chandler committed suicide after years of like pretty much regretting doing what he did because it destroyed Michael Jackson's life. Look no lie. And after he committed suicide, Jordan uh, Chandler 
came forward and said that he was never touched by Michael, never molested, and the whole thing was a big lie that his dad uh, cooked up to get and extort money from Michael, and he was coached into lying about Michael Jackson. So there goes that case, mm -hmm. and it was never brought to court. He was never convicted of that case. And the uh, one in 2005, well, he won that case because, I mean, you know, people uh, come at him and people want to believe that he's a child molester because people don't know the facts in the first case. So at that point, anybody who brings any kind of case against Michael Jackson, you know, people are going to say, say that he's at it again, raping kids. Mm -hmm. Every time something happens in the world, Somehow they, they get something on Michael Jackson or doing something weird to distract this from world events, you know, like the shit that's really happening. You know, even now, the motherfucker's been dead for like a couple of decades almost. And every time something happens, you, you hear about something with Michael Jackson, really. You know, <laughs> a documentary or some other dickhead that comes out and say, I want to say, could you touch me in my penis when I was... 14 in 1987. Yeah, what's your proof? I, I really have none. But I want 20 million. You know, that's what happens. And, and you know, unfortunately, Michael's only here to defend himself. But I will say that when he went to court, he proved he was innocent. And uh, by the way, the jury pool, it was very tainted because. In the eyes of the media, you know how it works, even though you're innocent to proven guilty. Mm -hmm. In the eyes of the media, he was already guilty. <laughs> you know, the, since the 80s, they labeled him a weirdo and a freak and a rapist. And uh, the dude was like singing about rainbows and saved the earth. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and the reason they went at him is because he wouldn't, they didn't want to make music that was about sex. He wanted to make music about positive shit, you know? Yeah. And Sony really wanted his catalog for uh, hundreds of millions. Plus, if he died, guess what happens? He also owned the Beatles catalog uh, worth billions. So, guess who has control of all that shit? Sony. Mm hmm. So there's, I mean, there's a lot of Michael Jackson stuff that is like really bizarre, and I don't believe he molested anybody, but I do think he was molested, and yeah. that's part of what drove him like to be a little loopy. That, and we do know he had a LIGO skin disorder, like he said he did. Um, that was not discovered at the autopsy. I know. He didn't lie about that. So. I know he. Uh he did get abused, though. I remember, even in his movie, they said that he was his dad would beat him if he didn't do his uh, dance moves right, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, I don't blame uh, Joe because he would spank all the kids. You ever know, been spanked by your dad or your mom? Mm -hmm. It happens. And when you're in that environment, look, I will say this about Joe Jackson and, and his wife. Um, none of the Jackson kids became drug dealers, right? Yeah. Um, none of them, you don't hear about Tito or any of the other brothers, your man, whatever, uh, ever be involved in DUIs, murders, gang activity, drug deals. None of them. All right, so as parents, they did a good fucking job. Yeah. Because in a bad place like in Indiana, they raised a bunch of kids in an area full of gangsters and gangbangers, and none of them turned out that way. They were Jehovah's Witnesses, by the way. Mm -hmm. My family was, is Jehovah's Witness. I know how that environment works. I'm agnostic. I broke away from religion, but I know how they think. And I can tell you, as parents, they did a, a bang-up job considering all the kids they had. So I don't blame Joe. You got to get the best out of you, the best performer in the group. Yeah, I know. I gotta go yeah. do something real quick. I will be right back, okay? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Michael's kind of a sensitive dude anyways. Like you yelled at him or his yeah. rat and Ben and you're like, God damn it, Ben, you shit it on we and, and Michael be in the corner. Stop screaming at Ben. So I mean he was a very sensitive kid as it was, so if you got an ass whooping one day to him, I was like, oh, my God, he whooped me in my ass. Help! It's the worst thing ever. 
Man, I've been whooped with chancletas. I don't know if you know what that is, Mark. I've been whooped with belts, uh, trees. I got hit by a bike. My dad threw that shit in my head. I know the motherfucker's trying to kill me, but I still love my dad. You know, like, you know, shit happens. But I'm not a sensitive kid. You know, Michael was, uh, they, they, look at the way not only he, but his entire family dresses, right? They are. They're all very soft spoken. They dress like fancy. Like they're not normal in that sense. They're all like very sensitive. But Michael is the most sensitive out of all of them. And um, you know, that's just the way he was, man. Rest in peace, though. He made some great ass fucking music. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Michael Jackson and and the words "great ass fucking" should never go together. Let me get a good fucking music. <laughs> yeah, this thing's why I mean they was pulled off then. Uh, would you say something about Chopin? That's what he was uh, a great musician. No, um, <laughs> yeah, it was this thing's why I mean they was pulled off then. Okay, I I I, I kind of got some of that. <laughs> you know, okay. yeah, you know, good. you know, you know, your problem is though, uh, your microphone's on your desktop or on your uh, no, laptop. No, my microphone's in there. That's even worse. <laughs> That's actually better. This, this is generally good. Uh, you need something like this, my friend. That's what I. I've been, I've been saying that to him for a while now. He won't. And right here. Look. Amazon, you get these bad boys for 25 bucks. Uh, this, is, this is what I've been using for like the last uh, 10 years, and I have a thousand dollars set up, which is crazy. This is um, a Jabra um, device, um, which retails for about 200. I pick up for about uh, 120 or something. Uh, British pounds. $25. <laughs> Yeah, but and, this it, is... it, it, it's never filled me one, and it sounds like it. But, but this is good for other purposes, such as um, out in a bag, so um, I can't really wear uh, that um, outside. Understood, but uh, Roger, who sounds better? I, I sound better. <laughs> <laughs> Gen generally, I sound good. It's just today. Just I, I I've been telling him for for a while now that he, he should just cave in and get the headphones. That I mean, and they're not that bad. You know, back in the seventies, no. back in the seventies, we used to wear them things all the time. Didn't have a problem in the world with it. You know. Yeah, but it's not it's not practical for my my own use case. I think you'd look cool with a pair. To be honest. Mm. Uh, Again, this, this is this is all space on the endless. I gotta go to the bathroom and take a poop while I'm on the air. Then that's it. Like, well, gentlemen, I'm gonna go drop some heat mail. I'll be back and then I'll just put my video off and be like. Oh. <laughs> and now he's just showing off. <laughs> Speaking right now, but you can't hear what I'm saying. I'm on mute. See, he's showing off to you, Mark. Indeed, indeed. $25, Mark, and I can mute myself. <laughs> I can mute myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds terrible when you come back on. It's not you, it's the device. <laughs> I am back on now. Um, it should sound okay. But you're touching your ear every time you do it. That's the weird part. Like, you're actually, like, <laughs> reaching up and touching your head and to oh. turn... Is that he's getting an order from a Sith Lord. Execute Order 66. <laughs> Have you ever watched more Commandy? Oh, of course. Nano Nano. That's Nano Nano. Nano. Yeah, Robin Williams. He, he would always touch his freaking head yeah. to, to touch to, to uh, talk to Orbison. And... Yeah. That was one of my first shows growing up when I was a kid. Me, me too. I loved him. Have you seen, uh, have you heard of uh, Jaime Costa? No, I haven't. Dude, I didn't believe cloning was possible 
until I saw this dude. Uh, he looks identical to Robin Williams. Oh wow! It looks like 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 Robin Williams like reborn. Like it, uh, he does. Uh, he's an actor, by the way. And he uh, uh, does uh, uh, Mark and Mindy. Uh, clip and put on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you on the chat here. And uh, it is freaking brilliant. He's trying to get a biopic of Robert Williams made. He's a huge fan, and he looks just like this dude. Um, let me see if I can find this. I can look at you. Jaime Costa. Robin Williams. And he does uh, impression videos, all kinds of stuff. And he doesn't really have to do much of an impression, because like, the guy just looks like Robin Williams. It's like, it's freaky. Uh, let me see. It, it was funny, like, they were trying to do, like, a deep fake, and they were like, uh, yeah, we don't have to do anything. It looks just like fucking Robin Williams. <laughs> 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 they, so they didn't do, like, they were like, this can't change anything. It's like, the, it's like the split the image. It was like, the, it's a perfect deep fake. They don't have to do any work. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking! I I seen a uh, somebody put up a picture the other day on that new uh, what is it uh, Enigma Cafe. They were showing pictures of no, it was on Jaffe's show. He was showing pictures of this guy who's claiming to be Elvis Presley. Dude, he would be like a hundred years old right now, right? Like. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, he'll be like, I used to be the king. <laughs> I'm the mummy. Oh, <laughs> but a hound dog. I just threw my back out. Oh, I need intensive care now. Put me in a hospice so I can get down with. I, I say, those would be alive right now. I'd be a rapper. And here comes Mark. He does look like him. Oh Man my god. Jews. Oh, there he goes. Hey, what's up? <laughs> You're right. This guy could easily be him. Right? Yeah. Dude, and he he's a like a really good actor. He even did a Han Solo uh video like where he's playing Han Solo in like a like you know, like a fan film. Uh-huh. And Bro, he's like spot on. I mean, he doesn't look like Harrison Ford as much, but his mannerisms, like, this guy's a really good actor with the makeup on and stuff. You're like, he can pass as Han Solo, but than the guy they got for the movie. Now, the ideal actor would have been this other guy named Anthony Gruber, who looks exactly like Harrison Ford. And I found him because of this guy, Hangman Coast. I was looking at the Robin Williams video, and I was like, who the hell is this Anthony Gruber guy? Wasn't he? Why wasn't he cast? And bro, if you want to see like freaky, let me show you that video. Anthony in Gruber. Sounds like a. Have you ever heard of Andy Kaufman? Uh, no. Andy Kaufman played on Taxi with a. Uh, uh, oh, Andy Kaufman. Yeah, Andy Kaufman. I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy Kaufman and Jim Carrey played him. Played him. Right. Uh, man, man, yeah, man, I one. No, I just misheard the name. That's all I didn't know. Uh, but then him, he, oh, he went Andy Kaufman. Yeah. Now he he was he was one of those kind of guys too. He could he could look pretty much like anybody he wanted to look like, and he he was a strange one. He was a real strange guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, most of those gimmick him and Larry uh, the, the King. Yeah. Uh, Lawler. Yeah. Uh, they did a uh, like whole wrestling thing, which that was just a joke. Was just a <laughs> they're actually really good friends, but mm -hmm. uh, everybody thought that like, they were mortal enemies. He's all part of it. that out. Yeah, it was funny as shit. Like, but anyway, check it down. That's Anthony Gruber. He got a gig on a movie called uh, Days of Adeline. Or Age of Adeline. I'm sorry, Age of Adeline. And uh, it was with Harrison Ford as the lead actor. And he played a young version of Harrison Ford in that movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how much he looks and sounds like a young Harrison Ford. 
Yeah. And uh, he, he did this video uh, imitating uh, the, the scene from Star Wars. His voice, mannerisms, like, he looks like a clown. And, uh, like, there there even talks about him taking over the Indiana Jones role since he didn't get the Han Solo role. Um, they, they fucked up the Han Solo movie really bad. That's how I'm always worried about biopics. But if I was going to do, like, a Robin Williams one, that high Costa guy, I mean, yeah, no doubt, that's that's the guy. I mean, you don't have to do anything. Now him, he, he would be better as a young Indy. And uh, than I- anything else, I, I it's cool with Harrison Ford, but he he would be perfect for young Indiana Jones. Lee Anthony Gruber kid. Yeah. Yeah, no, he, he looks dead on. He he, he uh, would be perfect for that, just with the way he acts, because like in the movies with Indiana Jones, that's where you get to see a lot of uh, Harrison Ford's facial expressions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. He would be perfect for it. Yeah, they were rebooting. Indiana Jones, that's the guy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you have to look any further. Plus, he already played a young Harrison Ford in Age of Adeline. Yeah. That would which be. is a really good, it's a good movie. I don't, have you seen that movie? No, I haven't seen it at all. I, I haven't. Oh, I, dude. I, uh, the, the, the one thing I freaking bring up every time I talk about Harrison Ford is how he got his job. Like, I know he was a carpenter before he was an actor yeah. and he was actually in uh, what's his face's office fixing his door uh, yeah uh, George Lucas yeah George Lucas's yeah he, he was fixing his door he was working for the carpenters uh, union there was actually interaction before that um, Steven Spielberg had used Harrison Ford for construction also for fixing some stuff and he's the one that advised George to call the same company, or the same people. And ironically enough, it was Harrison Ford who showed up for the job. Same guy. And uh, that's how he met George Lucas. And yeah, he was doing some cabinet work for his office. And George, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you'll, you'll know this to be fact that you know the story. George uh, was short on somebody to read, and he's like, and you want to read here with the rest of the cast just as villain because you know didn't have a, it was for American graffiti of all things mm-hmm. and uh, he was like okay and he just like he put down the brush or whatever the hell he was doing and went over and read and like George was like holy smokes this guy is not like a natural and uh, he cast him in American graffiti it was a small part but it was you know it was a good part uh, then he cast him in Star Wars because again he was working on carpentry and he's like he was looking for Han Solo and he couldn't find him and he's like well you you walked in a movie with me once you want to read for Han Solo and he's like sure George so like talk about being in the right place at the right time right yeah really that is true yeah yeah no uh, that, that. And now he's, he's like the best uh, known actor in the world really like, exactly that's something else. I love hearing stories about it because it's uh, that's one of the that's one of the big ones. Like where a person just becomes a, a movie star overnight. You know that very seldomly happens in Hollywood. You know. Huh? Uh, I, I don't know if you know the whole history of uh, Death Row Records versus Bad Boy Records. Yeah. Tupac versus Biggie. Um, when Biggie died in '97. Puffy or Diddy or whatever his nickname is, the Diddler, um, really raped the shit out of his music catalog. And I'm talking about for hundreds of millions of, millions of dollars because he literally, like, everything he released sold. You know, the album Life After Death, which came out right um, as Biggie had passed, um, sold, I think it was like 11. 12, 13 million copies or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's about $100 million right there, plus, right? Mm-hmm. And he didn't give any of that to the family of Biggie Smalls. He kept all that. He kept all royalties for years and years and years. So he screwed to him. He screwed uh, another rapper, Shine. 
literally cost him his career and his freedom because he went to jail or some bullshit gun charge, mm-hmm. uh, which is what caused Jennifer Lopez to leave Diddy. Uh, because Diddy was uh, the one with the gun, he was the shooter, and he blamed Shine the rapper. And Shine ended up doing a prison time because Diddy <coughs> died. Um, and so there's a lot of artists he screwed the locks, uh, Lil Kim, Lil Caesar. <coughs> I mean, he just, like, what he would do is uh, um, Black Rob. Craig Mac all, all had number one albums mm-hmm. and sold millions of copies. They all got screwed out of royalties and they're both dead. In very weird circumstances too. So, uh, I don't know. Diddy's a very shady individual. Man. Yeah. There's a lot of death around that guy, uh, which is always very weird and conspiratorial. You know, like, you know, it's very some weird shit. And he, and, after years of being sued and, and you know talked about and you know with sweeping shit under the rug, right before all this shit broke out a few months before, he uh, opened up and said he's going to give uh, the discography rights uh, to the families of the dead rappers uh, and give them uh, uh, rights to the catalogs so you know they can make money off the music. But what he's not saying is he's already made all the profit and the the discography rights or the catalog rights are worthless now. Yeah. There's no money to be made. It's like nobody buys CDs anymore. It's like buying freaking old reruns from back in the nineteen seventies. Yeah. And it's not like I mean they have the rights to the music but not the videos. So the families can't put the videos out. Yeah. So what are you gonna do with a catalog of music that, that nobody's gonna buy anymore? <laughs> but like what? Greatest hits? You start like artists who had a, a one album that was you, you know good. You start back at the basics, you, you take that shit back to the radio stations. They got these classic music channels. Start start hitting them up. If you if you don't, man, you you create one, you start freaking putting in that old music and for every time it's played you get paid. The problem with that is you, you have YouTube with everything on it now. You mm-hmm. have all these internet places. And with technology and certain things like smartphones, you don't need to even listen to the radio station. I know. I, I mean, I drive and I hardly ever listen to AM or FM radio. And if I do, it's like because there's an interview on an AM station I want to hear or some sports related stuff. I never put FM on this sort of music. Mm hmm. You know, if I want to hear music, I have it on my phone uh, as MP3. <coughs> I have 250 gigs on my phone, or I play it off my uh, my my phone on like YouTube, and I can have a video playing with the music loud banging. You know, you don't need physical copies. Everything is streaming now, so well, I mean, technology I, killed you know that. I understand not not listening to the radio and everything, but when this stuff is being introduced to me and somebody's telling me this is mine you know it, it doesn't matter if I listen to the radio or not I know mm. that this is where I go to get money from it you know what I'm saying yeah. uh, doesn't mean I have to listen to the radio it just means hey you know you need to go talk to these radio stations and see if you can get a couple bucks from it you know that's what I would yeah, do no, no. That's but, what, uh, you know, trust me they, they're not paying that's the problem and historically, radio stations never really pay artists to play their music. The way that worked uh, historically was um, artists would actually grease the palms of the DJs yeah. to have the music uh, right. played. So it's the other way around. Yep. Um, and now, you know, there's no greasing of palms anymore. The radio stations just play the music as long as they have, you know, BMI cover, man. That's because uh, the DJ yeah. sobered up. Yeah. Uh, the DJs for radio stations are usually uh, covered with licensing so they can play whatever they want. Mm-hmm. They don't pay royalties to play a song. Uh, what happens is, depending on who they know, and I know this from knowing the industry and, and knowing people within the actual AMF of radio industry, uh, the way most of these songs become hits is because the artists 
knows the DJs. They've done the rounds. They've done the interviews with a lot of these uh, DJs. And they sometimes pay them under the table to put their songs on there. And the production house helps pay the DJs under the table uh, to put their music on the air. And they, they put it in, you know, sporadically here and there. And if enough people start calling and say, hey, I want to hear that new Backstreet Boys song, uh, Giving Up My Anus, or whatever. <laughs> song is. You're tearing up my ass, or, you know, whatever the song is. And, um, you know, that becomes a hit song that everybody's like, You're tearing up my ass when I'm with you. And everybody's singing that shit. And, you know, that becomes a big hit. And then, you know, like, that's the way it was done. But now it's like, you know, DJs are like, yeah, go fuck yourself. I don't need your money. I'm making money DJing. And, you know, I put whatever I want, you know? Yep. Uh, so it, it's kind of harder. Technology is to blame. And again, you just go on YouTube. The artists now make more money putting their own stuff on YouTube than even having a company that they're signed to. So yeah. a lot of artists just go on the independent. You know, so they're signing with like Columbia Records or. You know, Interscope or one of these big companies, they're like bypassing the, the, the middleman because they're getting raped for decades. Yep, that's that's what I was thinking while you were saying that. It's like, I mean, I, I can't really criticize them because, I mean, like these big uh, cable corporations are the same way, you know, they were freaking making money and ripping these uh, shows off. That's why a lot of shows that uh, were actually on television had to be taken off was because of the corporation and, and what they determined could be played and not, you know. And all of a sudden now they've got freaking YouTube channels that are allowing them to put their stuff on, uh, well, like uh, Roku and freaking, you know, shit like that, you know. So they don't mm -hmm. have to... They don't have to deal with the freaking cable companies. They can just put this shit straight on the freaking internet. You know? Yeah. yeah. I'll be right back. Uh, yeah. And I will do just the same. I'll be back in a, a, okay. a couple of shakes of a pig's tail or something like that. That's the best I can come up with. You know, it's pretty good. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That works. Maybe a horse's tail is a lot longer, but I'll be back. <laughs> Mm, well, missed half of it, actually. <laughs> actually, uh, I'm I'm thinking and I'm thinking actually I've come with a Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, minds are full of crack because the left is fully whacked and they keep fucking with <laughs> our kids and they're endangering the lives. So we're all going to end up really fucked. That's you know, the truth. Yeah, I got a mines account. Uh, I have a mind uh, to like pay more attention to mines. Uh, and see what I did there. Uh, I just haven't really uh, kept up with uh, you know that on top of all the three hundred and eighty-five thousand other fucking social media outlets that are on there. Jesus fucking Christ! There's so many of them. Like now they have. You know, you know about TikTok. There's another one called Likey. And I'm like, what the fuck is Likey? And it's like, it's just like fucking TikTok. Well, what the fuck do we need Likey for? And I'm like, no, I like, got no answer. And it was just, it, like, there's so many of these, like, apps. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Fuck this. I'm going back to MySpace. Yeah. No. It's it is a competitive industry. So really competitive industry. 
MySpace was the shit, son. Like, I love MySpace. Oh, I know, but like it's become like total bullshit. And I was like, you, you, it's not the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, now it's it's more like music driven than anything else. But it's like, yeah, we would really don't need that. Like, how about you make it, you know, like cool again? Like, you know, like they have Make America Great Again. Make MySpace great again, motherfucker. Do something important. Uh, Odyssey's cool. I like Odyssey. Who? Oh, yeah, Mammy Tom. Yeah, yeah. Was it... He he's uh, the one who was uh, riding with Jaffe and he got mad uh, at me or Jaffe or that dude. Oh yeah 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 that Tom I think Miami Tom no, that's a different Tom man yeah, yeah, might be some. Well he's on Facebook also like where where else is he he's yeah. Oh, I had no idea on that. Is they still have that goofy leg? Yeah. Like. He should have taken a trip into the Bermuda Triangle. Because when he sold MySpace, he fucked everything up. Like, I don't know. Oh, man. He needs to jiggy. Yeah, he needs to jiggy his way back into MySpace and fix that shit. You know who wants MySpace now, right? Justin Timberlake. Yeah, he, well, I think he stones. I don't know. He bought it uh, for like twenty million dollars, money well spent, uh, or somewhere along those lines, um, which is crazy. Because at one point it was a billion dollar company. You know. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, he's a he's a good guy. I got to briefly speak to him um, for like thirty seconds <laughs> once. Yeah, he's a, he's a cool dude. Uh, I have actually met Mobile. Uh, it's uh, it's my cell phone provider for the last two and a half years, and uh, they're actually really good. I've had no issues. Uh, doesn't drop calls. Um, the like the internet when I go out works perfect. I get and then my phone's oldest. I got the uh, Samsung S8, which is old as shit now. They're like the S20 something, and uh, it works perfect on that. Uh, my phone is not 5G because it was before the 5G technology upgrade. So uh, I still do the 4G, and it has no issues. It, like it picks it up perfect. Has a cool hotspot. You know, if, you, if your phone has 5G, it has 5G towers. They actually just uh, sold majority ownership to T-Mobile. So they mm-hmm. have now all the T-Mobile towers carrying the signal, so it's even stronger. Um, T-Mobile is a minor owner, but they're now the, they're majority owner. And Ryan Reynolds is now a minority owner, but he still has ownership stock in the company. Yeah, he's, he's a good dude. Uh, but again, I mean, like overall, the the they, I only got involved uh, switching over to them because he managed to do something which I never thought I'd see in my freaking life. And um, when I tell you what it is, it's gonna be like, really? That's what he did? He convinced you? See if you can figure it out. I'm gonna give you ten seconds before you say anything. No. 
Né? Really? Yeah, something he did which blew my mind into the point that I was okay, I'm switching them in mobile now. He got Rick Moranis to get off his lazy ass and he did a, a commercial with him from in mobile. Now, Rick Moranis played uh, Lord Helmet in Spaceballs, the greatest comedy ever made. And he was also in, uh, let's see, such classics as uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Uh, Honey, I Blew Up the Baby, which is my favorite. That was the third one. I'm not too fond of the sequel, Honey, I, We Shrunk Ourselves. That wasn't that great. Um, but the first and the third I really liked. Uh, he, I mean, Rick Moranis did a lot. And, uh, of course, Ghostbusters. No. But he played, but he played Darth Vader better than Darth Vader played Darth Vader. That's how good he was. Lord Helmet. That the best thing, like the the sidekick. I don't know if you ever caught that joke, but the sidekick that he always had with him, that in the gray suit, his name was Colonel Sanders. And there's a part when, like, he's like, they went to Plaid. And he's like, what do we have in this thing, a cuisine art? And he's like, no, sir. And he goes, I want light speed. And he goes, no, 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 light speed is too slow. And he's like, speed too slow. And he's like, we got to go faster than light speed. And he's like, well, he goes, take him to ludicrous speed. Doesn't exist, by the way. And then he's like, sir, ludicrous speed. And he's like, he's like telling, like, Shut down the circus and I do this, and he's like, Come on, Colonel Sanders, what are you, chicken? That line, bro, for years, I would like have tears in my eyes. I thought I was the only one that ever got that. What's the matter, Colonel Sanders? Chicken? Oh. Oh, uh, it's Spaceballs Croup? Or which one? Uh, remind me. See what we're doing. <laughs> no, no, well, the, the, the part of he goes, I knew it. I'm surrounded by assholes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, because he, he goes, who made that man a gunner? Because he you know, first like he shoots the ship, he's like, I said I cross her nose, not up it. And he goes, Sorry, sir. He has like he's cross eyed and shit. He's like, um, you know, and he goes, who, who, who is that ass? He goes, That's his name, sir. Asshole. Major asshole. And he goes, Who made that man a gunner? He goes, I did sorry. And he goes, Who's that? He's also an asshole, sir. He goes, How many assholes do I got on this ship? And everybody turned on like uh -huh. and he's like, I knew it. I'm surrounded by assholes. And then the best line, the helmet comes on. He's like, keep firing assholes. <laughs> Dude, I can quote that movie like without a problem. Like, uh, the, my, my favorite is Michael Winslow because he was in Police Academy. The party's like, we lost the creeps, the sweeps, and the beeps. And then like he looks at Colonel Sam, he's like, that's not all he's lost. Like, <laughs> what which one though? Oh, okay. Yeah, Ooh, that was well way back. <laughs> yeah, uh, the 
the one uh, one part I remember of a teaching Chong movie, which was correct, Neil, was when uh, that one girl finds Ajax in the kitchen and she thinks it's cocaine and she's like snorting the shit out of it. And like Chong is like, uh, you, you might not want to do that. <laughs> and she's like, like, ah, this is fucking great. And he's like, oh man, like that's fuck. She just snorted fucking Ajax. Like, yeah, at least she's going to be clean on the inside, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, wasn't it Dave? Yeah, yeah, but it was it, it wasn't the the parrot. It was uh, Chong in the background. He's like, "Hey man, let me in." Well, who's this man? It, it, it's me, man. I got stuff. Oh man, and like they go like that for like ten minutes, and he's like, "Let me in, man! It's me! I got the stuff! Come on!" And like, who's this man? But it's it, it was uh, Tommy uh, Chung and, and Cheech. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna make you the the one of uh the Chichi Chong with the with the uh Dave. Yeah, there you go. Dave's not here, man. No man, I'm Dave. <laughs> oh this shit's so funny. Yeah, that that that's where well they got it from uh, this uh comedy skill of this look. Uh, send without notification. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. Click it now, and that's the original. Uh, Dave's not here. Oh, the original, and that's the one that uh, I had that kid in. And, uh, he's in the, and it, yeah, and he's actually in the uh, movie with Harrison Ford. Yeah, for Chi and Chong. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, it's Dave, man. Open up. I got, I think the cops open, you know, saw me open up. <laughs> and then Chong is like, who is it? And he's like, man, it's Dave. Open up. <laughs> and he's like, who? He's like, Dave, open up. He's like, Dave. Dave's not here, man. <laughs> he's like, no, man, I'm Dave. <laughs> Chong is like the perfect burnout, dude. Yeah. You mean we're smoking dog shit, man? <laughs> yeah. He's like, he ate my stash, so I followed him around and then like you know he's like, Do you mean we're smoking dog shit, man? <laughs> Yeah. The only ones that got close and if uh, he, one of them would have not died, I think they would have made more movies together, uh, was Chris Farley and David Spade. Um, I mean, you saw um, Tommy Boy 
and black sheep. That was perfect casting when they were together. Like, I mean, they were like, they would compliment each other, especially Tommy Boy was so funny because, like, and David Spade is a very funny guy, but he played it so, like, spot on, like, deadpan. And then, like, anything funny he would say it would be elevated to even funnier because of that. And then Chris Farley's just being a goofball you know, the whole time. So it was, like, that was, I think, the closest. Uh, but it had more to do, I think, with the, even the physical comedy of Chris Farley. But as far as, like, just, you know, commentary jokes uh, as a duo, I don't think that would be funnier than Cheech and Chunk. I mean, they were just... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, there was, like, no over the top. Uh, it was a physical. It was just, like, they were just funny together. You mm-hmm. know, like, it, just, it worked perfectly. The, the thing that gets me is, like, I've been able... Now that I've been older, I've been able to kind of, like, go and look at a lot of the older comedies. Because when I was younger, I never looked at anything that was black and white, you know? And, like, uh, when I was growing up, George Burns was, like, already in his 90s. You know? I, oh, yeah. I thought he was funny, but then I went and I actually went back and I watched his older stuff with him and his wife. And, dude, Crazy. that... Yeah, Gracie Allen was the bomb, dude. She was so freaking funny. It was pathetic, you know. And and that then I then I, when I was growing up, I didn't know anything about freaking uh, what's his name, um, uh, Jack Benny. Okay, and like now that I've actually been able to watch Jack Benny, freaking, it makes sense to me why people like freaking Seinfeld and all them made made it so big is because they were riding off of Jack Benny's uh, coattail. He, yeah. He was a yeah. he was a freaking genius. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the uh, early comedians, uh, even like Jackie Gleason and some of these cats, I mean, they really seeded the way for comedians now because, I mean, if you watch a lot of comedy shows, they're still kind of redoing those old comedians, you know, biggest hits. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, uh, the King of James. Have you seen that show? No, I don't think so. Um, I forget. Kevin something is the guy's name. Uh, he's pretty big. He's been on movies with Will Smith. He's done Kevin James. Kevin James. That's the guy's name. Um, that, the show is a big hit. A huge hit. But it's the honeymooners in a modern day setting. That's all really it is. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, he's like a goofy, you know, uh, Jack English and fat guy. Yeah, I know. He played on King of Queens. King, yeah, King of Queens. That's the show I'm talking That's about. That's what it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I freaking just now realized what you was talking about. Shit, I had to go and look at his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got one of those names of like, yeah, I don't remember the name, but we see the face. Like, yeah, I know that fat guy. Yeah. Now, he, he actually sticks out to me a lot whenever it comes to, like, his... Uh, well, he, he plays he plays the stupid man. You know what I mean? Like he he doesn't pretend yeah. to be smart, and when he when you know and and that that's kind of what people want to see when it comes to people. There's nothing wrong with it, you know. Well, there's it's like Jackie or uh, well, like a uh, freaking George Burns and freaking Gracie Allen. I I honestly think people didn't want to show Gracie Allen because like women had a problem with the way she acted. You know what I mean? Because she she was ditzy. Yeah, yeah no, well, none of that. Um, a lot of people back then were so into like Lucille Ball, and they had kind of like there was a little bit of a rivalry mm-hmm. when it came to like female comedians because there weren't that many. And uh, Lucille Ball had really started like get really famous. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, Grace didn't really like peak as as funny as she was, to become as big as she could have been. Yeah. Uh, Nip- Comedians had it a lot easier, you know. Uh, back then, if you're like Lucille Ball and, and everybody was like already focused on you as a big female comedian, that's it. There's no other, you know, actress or comedian, mm-hmm. a female comedian that could take their spot for decades, you know. I mean, they still talk about Lucille Ball like she was a brilliant comedian and she was okay, uh, but she wasn't like the funniest either. You know? Yeah. She I mean, I, I laughed at, at, at some of the stuff, but honestly, the best part of the show was uh, Ricky Ricardo to me on Cuban, like, Lucy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Now with me, um, I, 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 every time I get in to talk about uh, Lucille Ball and all that, I, I think of uh, Carol Burnett. Now she was smart. She went through the route of Las Vegas. And, and that that was how she made it and I, I noticed that a lot of good comedians did that too they came up yeah. out of Las Vegas and that's because that's where she started out she was right there on the yeah. strip you know so and uh that's the one thing I did notice like she didn't have to compete with them when and uh no well none of that um Carol Burnett was more in your face than Gracie Gracie was like uh, you know she was funny but she was kind of like a little bit more mild personality mm-hmm. was and Carol Burnett was a little bit more like uh, a female Jim Carrey in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, very like, you know, spot on and, and active and uh, always trying to like, you know, do a lot of stuff in the makeup. And uh, that, that's what really stood out for her. Uh, Lucy almost like played herself in, in a way. You know, yeah. Was too long. Uh, even I love Lucy, it's kind of like her life, her and Ricky Ricardo. You yeah, know? pretty much. Now, it's fucked up because, like, for generations, everybody thought that we Cubans spoke like that. Like, hello, Lucy, <laughs> uh, you in trouble now? <laughs> you sound like that motherfucker, you sound like everybody else. No, you Cubans, this is how you talk. I'm like, no, not even the worst Cuban in my family talks like that. I'm Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> But for like 30 years, everybody in town, Cuba was like, Hello, how you doing? <laughs> That's why you guys never allow anybody at freaking like barbecues and shit. Like, people yeah, walk by know. and you guys are like, Get the fuck out of here, dude. What are you doing? You ain't getting none of my food. I can imagine how, like, you know, white people saw, like, when they had Cuban people, like, you know, moving to the neighborhoods and, like, they were invited, like, to barbecues. I can imagine this conversation. No, honey, I, we don't want to go to the, the Cuban family's barbecue. I don't want to see a room for like 30 people all going, I got the barbecue! <laughs> We're going to make that chicken! Now what are you in trouble? You over barbecue the chicken! I mean, we got ridiculed for decades for eating chicken and rice and uh, frijoles, beans. Uh-huh. And there's no reason to laugh at us because we like, you know, uh, beans chicken and rice if you know liking that, that kind of food is bad why does everybody dude, know it's that, it's you know? not it's not that way anymore dude people are trying to sneak into freaking cuban barbecues dude like i used to have a neighbor who was a cuban and i i honestly would always try to find an excuse to go over there whenever their dad was like out there freaking cooking on the barbecue i'd always yeah. try to do it dude because like and that's the way everybody in the neighborhood was like freaking every time he went out there with a barbecue he'd have to chase everybody away he's like you no you, you go away this is. because white people finally were like yo these motherfuckers can cook yeah exactly <laughs> it, took, it took like 40 years and then somebody was like you know what I'm gonna give these uh, these uh, Cuban guys uh, family here I'm gonna give them a shot I don't know you think it's a good idea there Earl don't worry it's gonna be okay, honey. Come on, Martha, let's go pay them on this. Next thing you know, they're eating chuletas and carne de puerco mm-hmm. and, like, and watermelons and all kinds of good savory shit. I'm getting a crank call, I think that's my phone going off the back now. Yeah, I, we, we probably better get off of here anyhow because it's, it's starting to get late, so. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, Mark's been on here going nuts over the, the computer and everything, so. <laughs> I, I saw that. I I will talk to you later. Um, I I have been recording this, so I'll send you a copy of it. Okay. Good times. All right. And uh, good thing again, no smoking of the meth or the heroin. That's right. I mean, I don't know. But, but anyway. we haven't covered anal probing yet, though. So we oh. you, you'll have to come back so we can discuss anal probing a little that's bit. That's kind of a that's kind of a touchy subject. Yes, and, uh, it is. When you get work, you know, they penetrate really deeply if you put your mind to it. It's all about right. penetration. That, that, that's yes. what it's about. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I will see you later. It, it was great talking to you tonight, man. I appreciate it. 
No problem. Glad I could, uh, you know, make you guys laugh a little bit. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll see. I, I'll see you on Sunday night. All right. Uh, you got that, sir? Uh, do you remember, you got the link. Yes. It, it's, it should be. It should be. No, it's not this Sunday. It's the next following Sunday. Yeah, next following Sunday. My bad. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Right. Don't get all confused that I get him on my uh, my show this week, and I'll be like. Uh, yeah there, buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry there, Steve Roberts. Uh, he got confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not right.